Welcome to section 32 of Bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Proteus Mirabilis, which you can see right here. This scene will take place near the water, with the Greek god Proteus front and center. In Greek mythology, Proteus dwelt in the water and was a prophetic sea god. Many people tried to surprise and capture him in order to get him to tell them about the future, so Proteus always had to be on the lookout. Anyway, the Proteus character in this scene should help you remember that this image is all about Proteus Mirabilis. Proteus is a gram-negative organism, so to help you remember this, we've shown the sunset pink and red appearing. This is a gram stain of gram-negative rods, technically E. coli. However, the morphology of Proteus Mirabilis is very similar. It's a bacillus and is pink or red appearing under the microscope. Just like in depictions of Proteus from Greek mythology, notice that we've shown him with a prominent flipper. A flipper facilitates movement, so we're using it in this image to represent swarming motility. Swarming motility refers to the coordinated movement of Proteus when it's plated. So flipper for Proteus mirabilis exhibits swarming motility when plated. Many beaches like this one have birds that like to nest and roam for food. So we've shown a bird eating an egg and sitting in its own urine. Just like in our other videos, the urine is here to help you remember that Proteus is urease positive. We covered this test in more detail in section 16, which is our video on Staph epidermidis, but recall that the pink color in the test tube right here indicates that the organism is urease positive. As you can see, some of these eggs appear old and rotten, hence the black smoke rising into the air. Just like in our salmonella videos, the black colored smoke is here to help you remember that Proteus produces hydrogen sulfide when placed in TSI agar, which results in a black color. This is an image of TSI agar, and recall that the black color right here represents that the organism has produced hydrogen sulfide. Next, if you look closely at the land, you can see that we've shown many prominent stones coming down into the water. The stones are here to help you remember that Proteus mirabilis can cause kidney stones. Okay, remember how I said that many people tried to capture Proteus and attempt to force him to prophesy about the future? Well, this woman was doing exactly that, and Proteus did not appreciate it. As you can see, he's pretty upset, and in self-defense, he appears to be strangling her. We used this symbol in the last video, but recall that strangled sounds like struvite. So, we've shown Proteus strangling this girl to help you remember that Proteus may cause struvite kidney stones. This is an image of struvite crystals detected by an automated urinalysis system. Notice the crystals, for example, right here and right here. Okay, now notice that we've shown Proteus with horns on his head. The horns should help you remember that staghorn calculi may be seen in a patient with a struvite kidney stone. This is an x-ray of the abdomen and shows an image of a staghorn calculus. As you can see, it's this bright, prominent region right here, which is involving the major calyces and renal pelvis. Obviously, these can be quite large impactions, so they often require surgery. Now that you've seen a staghorn calculus, let's talk about the pathophysiology in a bit more detail. If we go back to the urease test, you can see that a urease-positive organism converts urea into ammonia. Ammonia is a basic compound, so when this occurs in the urine, it results in alkalinization of the urine and precipitation of minerals, which is ultimately responsible for kidney stone formation. So the ammonia increases the pH of the urine, which results in kidney stone formation. All right, now let's finish discussing the image. As Proteus rapidly emerges from the water, you can see that little droplets of water are splashing all over the girl's crotch. This is to help you remember that Proteus causes urinary tract infections. Next, notice that we've shown a bunch of stinky fish in the water next to Proteus. Look at the green stench cloud rising into the air. We've included this in the image to help you remember that Proteus causes a distinct fishy scent. Finally, you can see that we've added a quiver of arrows on the back of the girl being strangled. She is a hunter after all, and she was trying to search out and capture Proteus. Unfortunately for her, he seems to have beaten her to the punch. Anyway, the quiver of arrows is like ammo for her bow, which is to help you remember that Proteus mirabilis can be treated with amoxicillin. I know, I know, we've usually used bullets in our other images, but bullets just didn't seem to fit the story as well, so we decided to use a quiver full of arrows. The concept is pretty similar though, so hopefully this won't be too difficult to remember. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 37-year-old male comes to the emergency department because of a three-hour history of dysuria and hematuria. His temperature is 38.4 degrees Celsius, pulse is 112 per minute, and blood pressure is 158 over 84. Physical examination is significant for left costovertebral angle tenderness. Urine analysis reveals the presence of blood and a pH of 6.7. An x-ray of the abdomen, or KUB, reveals the presence of a staghorn calculus in the left kidney. This patient's condition is most likely caused by A, dehydration, B, an organism that produces ammonia from urea, C, high levels of uric acid, or D, 
impaired cysteine reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a kidney stone with all of the classic symptoms, dysuria, hematuria, costovertebral angle tenderness, and even a staghorn calculus seen on imaging. The pH of 6.7 narrows down the possibilities because uric acid and cysteine kidney stones cause a low pH, whereas struvite kidney stones and calcium phosphate kidney stones cause a high pH. Finally, the presence of a staghorn calculus is strongly suggestive of an infectious cause, so we can be confident that the correct answer is B, an organism that produces ammonia from urea. This is describing a urease-positive organism. As we discussed earlier, Urease-positive organisms convert urea into ammonia. Ammonia is a basic compound, so when this occurs in the urine, it results in alkalinization of the urine and precipitation of minerals, which is ultimately responsible for the formation of struvite kidney stones as well as staghorn calculi. From the image, recall that the horns, right here, should help you remember that proteus may cause staghorn calculi. Also, the urine on the ground right here should help you remember that proteus is urease-positive. A is incorrect because this is referring to calcium oxalate stones. These are definitely the most common type of kidney stone and are often associated with dehydration. However, it would be unlikely for a calcium oxalate stone to result in the formation of a staghorn calculus because these are highly associated with infections. So A is incorrect. C is also incorrect. This is referring to a uric acid kidney stone. However, these are most commonly associated with leukemia or other conditions that result in a high rate of cell turnover and thus produce high levels of uric acid. This patient doesn't have signs or symptoms of leukemia though. Additionally, the urinary pH of uric acid stones is typically low, and this patient has a high urinary pH, making this unlikely. So C is incorrect. Finally, D is incorrect because this is referring to cysteine kidney stones, and these are caused by hereditary loss of cysteine in the proximal convoluted tubule. Because this condition is hereditary, it usually begins during childhood, and like uric acid kidney stones, these cause a low urinary pH. So this answer choice is unlikely. So again, the correct answer is B. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Proteus mirabilis.